His forces will rise up and desecrate the temple fortress. They will abolish the regular sacrifice. So we're, what, we're at time on the timeline. Where are we? Middle of the week. The regular sacrifice gets abolished at the middle of the week. They, they, meaning his forces, they will abolish the regular sacrifice and set up the abomination of desolation. With flattery, he will corrupt those who act wickedly toward the covenant. Okay? The covenant of peace. But the people who know their God will be strong and take action. Why would it say, but those who know their God? See how it's making a contrast to those who abandon their God, who abandon the Holy Covenant. It's making a contrast here. Okay. It just spoke of those apostates that just abandoned the Holy Covenant, but it says now, but those who know their God, there's a contrast being made, will be strong and take action. Those who have insight among the people will give understanding to many. I believe this is the 144,000 and the two witnesses, yet they will fall by the sword. We know this. The 144,000, they, uh, they are, I, I believe they will be killed. Some of them will be killed. Scripture doesn't say that, but th that's just my belief. But we do know the two witnesses are martyred. We know that for sure. Um, so they will fall by the sword and flame and be captured and plundered for a time, which I believe is a year. When they fall, they will be helped by some, but many others will join them and sincerely. Some of those who have insight will fall so that many may be refined, purified, and cleansed until the time of the end, for it will still come at the appointed time. Then the king will do whatever he wants. He will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. This is how we know Thessalonians fits. Okay. Above every God. And he will say outrageous things against the God of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. Isn't that what we just read in Thessalonians? Because what has been decreed will be accomplished. He will not show regard for the gods of his fathers, the gods desired by women or for any other God, because he will magnify himself above all. Instead, he will honor a God of fortresses, a God of, of his fathers. He did not know with gold, silver, precious stones and riches. He will deal with the strongest fortresses um, with the help of a foreign God. That is Satan. He will greatly um, he will greatly honor those who acknowledge him, making them rulers over many and distributing land as a reward. Remember that point, okay? At the time of the end, the king of the south will engage in battle, but the king of the north will storm against him with chariots, horsemen, and many ships. He will invade countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land, with this, which is Jerusalem, and many will fall. So there is an invasion to come. That is the abomination of desolation, but these will escape. <clears throat> Talks about the countries that will escape. It says he will get control over the hidden treasures of, of gold in Egypt. The Libyans and Cushites will also be in submission, but reports from the east and the north will terrify him. And he will go out with great fury to annihilate and completely destroy many. He will pitch his royal tents between the sea and the beautiful holy mountain, but he will meet his end with no one to help him. Okay. At that time, Michael will rise up, meaning stand out of the way because he is the protector of Israel. He is assigned to that nation. He is the prince that is assigned to that nation in the heavenly realm. There will be a time of distress. That also means tribulation. This is the tribulation period, such as never has occurred since the nations came into being until the time, till that time. But at the, that time, your people who are found written in the book will escape many who sleep in the dust of the earth. Now, look, it says those found written in the book will escape. Many who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to eternal life, some to disgrace and eternal contempt. Those who have insight will shine like the bright expanse of the heavens and though, and those who led many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, keep these words secret and seal up the book until the time of the end. Many will roam about with, and knowledge will increase. Okay, so <clears throat> he says, then I, Daniel, looked and two others were standing, um, standing there, one on the, this bank of the river and one on the other. One of them said to the man uh, dressed in linen who was above the water of the river how long until the end of these wondrous things and i heard the man dressed in linen who was above the water of the river he raised both hands toward heaven and swore by him who lives eternally that it will be for a time times and half a time guys it's three and a half years when the power of the holy people is shattered that is the two witnesses they are killed at the 1260th day that is the second half guys then all these things will complete be completed 
Well, if the power of the holy people is shattered, is the is the mark <clears throat> the marking event of the end when all of the things in the previous chapters we just read are completed, we know this is the second half. The seventh year, the end, the 1260th day, 60th day. Okay? All righty, guys. So I just want to quickly go to this timeline and show you, okay? Abomination of desolation is in the middle. So we know all these events are in the second half. Second half. Let's take one more look at this timeline. So I just want to make sure you guys that you have it. I went through that pretty fast because a lot of it was a regurgitation of some other things that we've studied. But look, abomination of desolation is in the middle. And before that, three and a half years prior is fake peace. Remember, we said that he signs the agreement at the beginning of the week. That's year one. Right. That's year one. He signs this agreement of peace and they have fake peace for three and a half years in until the middle when he breaks his covenant. He breaks his agreement. He reneges. He being the Antichrist. OK, so and, and he reneges with this event, the abomination of desolation. And remember, the apostates, they they um go. What, what did I say? The apostates abandon the holy covenant covenant first and then they join the forces they join the camp of the antichrist and and them with his forces they set up the abomination of desolation in the temple which i believe is a throne or some kind of seat that the antichrist sits himself in according to thessalonians okay these things happen in the middle of the week and then the apostasy those apostates are just before it okay if not simultaneous you know what i'm saying <clears throat> so now what does that mean that means that we cannot be gathered until this event we cannot be gathered guys until this event we have to see these things And remember in my previous study, what did I say? If this event begins the tribulation period in one particular region, it begins in what region? Jerusalem. But what begins it for the rest of the globe? Those who are not located in Jerusalem. How do we know that they are now in the tribulation? Trump won. That means the Gentile nations, the rest of the nations, Trump won, starts the tribulation for them. When did we say the rapture of the mostly Gentile church would be? Here and between abomination of desolation and Trump won. Here is when we go up, guys. This is why when we read Revelation 7, 9, and it talks about that multitude, how they are taken out of the tribulation that would be accurate because technically the tribulation period started for Israel with this event right here. But unless you're in Jerusalem, this event does not affect you. This event does Trump won because this is when the rest of the earth gets blasted with those plagues. So you understand why it does say the and why that is still accurate. But if you're not in Jerusalem, then this event what don't won't affect you. This one will, but we're gone before that here. So the multitude church is Revelation 7, 9. The tribulation begins in the middle. We're raptured right after the abomination of desolation, but before Trump won. And this is supported by Thessalonians 2, which said we will not be gathered until we see what? The apostasy and the man of sin revealed, which doesn't happen until when? The middle. Because the abomination of desolation is the event where he shows his true colors. Okay? Okay. So as far as the timing of the rapture, guys, I don't know how else we can explain this. People say it's at the beginning of the seven. That is not true. 
Why? Because the tribulation period is not seven years. The final week is seven years, but the tribulation is only half of it and the second half. And I want to reiterate when the two witnesses are, are martyred, they are martyred on the 1260th day. That is 12th month, last day of the month in the seventh year of the final week. Not here. Some people have said, well, they witnessed during the first half. That can't be true because we just read in Daniel that when the power of the holy people is broken, the holy people can include the two witnesses. When their power is broken, they were the ones with that power. Remember the power to rain down fire. Remember when their power is broken, all these things will be completed. All those things that we just talked about. The abomination of desolation, the apostasy, all those things will be completed. Well, if they were in this first half, how could all those things be completed if they existed in the first half? That doesn't make sense. It has to be this here. So we know that the 42 months here that the Antichrist is given authority to reign is simultaneous with the 1,260 days that the two witnesses witness right here. Because their 1,260th day, when they are done testifying on the 1,260th day, is right here at the end. Okay? From Tishri 1, year 4, to Adar, um, 30th day, 31st day actually, but it's 1,260 days. It would actually be the 30th day, but 1,260th day from here to here. Okay, scripture agrees with me. See how there are no contradictions. Everything fits. Everything fits. Okay. Now I have another study where we're going to go over those bowls because I have, I believe that the bowls are after the 1,260th day. Okay. If we quickly go to the book of Revelation, let's go there really fast. Just so I, I want, I want you guys to, to I want to just hit, drive this point home. Okay. So when we are. Remember, we said Revelation 6. Remember, we said that Revelation 6, we said that this is the same event as Matthew 24, which is the abomination of desolation. That is the midpoint. That is year four of the final week, the middle, three and a half years in. Okay? So anything after this, after Revelation 6, is second half. Well, look. The holy people, the 144,000, they are sealed and we know they're in the tribulation. So we know we're not at the end yet. We're at the middle because they're in the tribulation and they're just now getting sealed. And as they're getting sealed, we're at Revelation 7, 9. We see the multitude church in heaven. Then the first trump is doled out after we're safely in heaven to pound the entire earth. So we see Trump 1, Trump 2, Trump 3, Trump 4, right? Trump five, Trump six. Let's keep going. Now we're in Trump six. And who gets martyred in Trump six? The two witnesses, guys. The two witnesses are martyred. Trump six. We just said anything after Revelation six is second half. Look who gets martyred well after the second half in chapter 11. They get martyred and then Trump seven is blown. You see how that is? So this is how we know the two witnesses. We know that they are not martyred until the second half. But look, this is another thing. So we just said that they are murdered, martyred on the 1260th day, right? Which is year seven, last day, month, of, uh, 12th month, right? Month of Adar. So that means the bowls, which are in the seventh trumpet, have to be after that. OK, now two things could be true. It could be on that same day that all the bowls get doled out on the 1260th day in one day. That is definitely plausible. But remember, we have some intercalary days, right? So it could be on the intercalary day before we're actually in the first year, the next year. Or it could be 
that it's in the millennium when, when we are in Nissan one, when the bowls are dolled out, because think about it now, Christ's kingdom is officially, um, in, 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 in enforced. The, the, the 42 months of the Antichrist kingdom was over in the 12th month on the last day of the month. So the next day, day one of Nissan in the next year, Christ is now officially in charge. And now he has authority to take out everybody. And that's exactly what he does. And it could be that those bowls are in the millennium at the beginning in the millennium. That's something we're going to explore in another study. I don't want to go over that right now, but that's that, 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 that's something I want to explore in another study. But my point is, this is how we know that we're in the second half, that the two witnesses are in the second half and that the middle of the week forward is the tribulation period, not the full seven guys. Okay. Because if there is a breaking of peace, there has to be a time period where there was peace for the peace to have been broken. You understand how that works? If there was never ever no peace established, then how could he break peace, right? There had to have had been peace established somewhere on the timeline in order for it to be broken in the middle of the week. The first three and a half years was that fake peace where he comes to power by intrigue, not war. And then in the middle of the week, he will show his true colors with the abomination of desol desolation, okay? There's another passage that talks about the synagogue of Satan in the book of Revelation, when it pertains to Philadelphia and Smyrna, I believe that is a reference to the apostates because these are Israelites. That's something we're going to also explore in another study. All right, guys, so I just wanted to bring our remembrance to a particular passage that we read in another study. And I, I want you guys to remember this because I think this kind of drives home um, what I'm talking about as it pertains to these apostates. So we are in Psalms 55 and we're going to read it. <clears throat> um, and those of you who have been following my studies, you know what this means. You know where I'm going with this and you, you, you know this passage from another study. So God, listen to my prayer and do not hide from my plea for help. Pay attention to me and answer me. Uh, I am restless and in turmoil with my complaint because of my, because of the enemy's words, because of the pressure of the wicked for they bring down disaster on me and harass me in anger. My heart shudders within me. Terrors of death sweep over me. Fear and trembling grip me. Horror has overwhelmed me, I said. If only I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and find rest. How far away I would flee. I would stay in the wilderness. I would hurry to my shelter from the raging wind and the storm. Okay, so raging wind and storm, we said in a previous study when we went over this particular passage, was like an army, forces, you know. Lord, confuse and confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. This city is Jerusalem. Day and night they make the rounds on its walls. Crime and trouble are within it. This sounds a whole lot like the tribulation. Destruction is incited. Oppression and deceit never leave its marketplace. Now it is not an enemy who insults me, otherwise I could bear it. It is not a foe who rises up against me, otherwise I could hide from him. But what does it say? But it is you, a man who is my peer, my companion, a good friend. We used to have close fellowship. We walked with the crowd into the house of God. The house of God is the temple. So we know this is rel relative to the temple. But let's think about this for a second, right? Could this be David? I say no. Why? Because David did not build the temple Solomon did and before Solomon built the brick and mortar temple all they had was the tent of meeting so I don't think this is David speaking in this context let death take them by surprise let them go down to shale alive because evil is in their homes and within them but I call to God and the Lord will save me I complain and groan morning noon and night and he hears my voice Though many are against me, he will redeem me from my battle unharmed. God, the one enthroned from long ago, will hear and will humiliate them because they do not change and do not fear God. My friend acts violently against those at peace with him. 
what did we just read about the Antichrist? How he comes during a time of peace. Peace, peace, peace. He comes to power during a time of peace. He acts wicked, wickedly against those who are at peace with him. So it's like, this is, it's, it's a clue. This word peace is a clue that for one, it's a clue that this is the Antichrist that we're talking about. And it's also a clue that we are in during the tribulation period because it's the time of peace, the peace that he reneges on. So this is where we get the idea that the, that the, the agreement is a peace treaty. So he says, my friend acts violently against those at peace with him. He violates his covenant. That means his agreement. His buttery words are smooth, but war is in his heart. The Antichrist signs the agreement at the beginning of the week for a covenant of peace. And he violates this covenant, this agreement. That means he reneges. His buttery words are smooth, but war is in his heart. His words are softer than oil, but they are drawn, drawn swords. Okay. And it goes on and say, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Okay. So this to me supports this idea of, of this. For one, that there is peace, that the covenant, the agreement that the Antichrist signs is one of peace. And when I say that he reneges on that covenant of peace in the middle of the week, this is where I get that notion from, okay? And we see that when, when scripture tends to repeat itself and repeat a point, we should perk up and listen because it is trying to give us a clue. If it says it once and then it says it two, three, four, five more times, you know that it is a clue and we need to pay attention to that because that is a key to our understanding, here again, we see probably for the fourth or fifth time, this idea of peace. And it always seems to be at attached to the man of sin. And we're in Psalm 55, guys. And this isn't the only passage. There are several passages within the books of Psalms, um, but within the Psalms that are referring to the time of the end. And you know it by the language. And if you have devoured your Revel book of Revelation, you will recognize the language. And you got to know some parts of your other, some other parts of the Bible too, because you can use common sense. You can know that certain things can't be. For example, David um, didn't build the temple. Solomon did. Right. So, and so we can know certain things. Right. And then there are other parts that are about Christ that are in the Psalms, you know, but the writer, this person that is being betrayed, I believe is the covenant prince in um, Daniel. He is the one who is on the other side of the agreement with the Antichrist. Okay. Hope this is helpful, guys. Leave your questions in the comment section till the next study.